Hello, and how is everybody doing? My name is Luis Rodriguez, and I am the executive director for RGV Lead, um, who is a partner agency um, hosting the Career and Education Expo. Um, this is the 19th annual Career and Education Expo. Um, today's Tuesday, October 27th, and this is session six, um, arts, video, te video technology, and communications. We thank you for joining us. <clears throat> I'm going to start off by showing you a graph that of our labor market report that RGV Lead produces uh, every other year. Uh, what it does is it gives you an opportunity as a high school student to be able to see the career fields, um, what the entry level wage would be, an average wage and an experienced wage for that position. Uh, and then it also gives you the information as far as how many annual openings there are. Um, and then it gives you what education um, and information you're going to need. So if we look at the sheet uh, on that, or the, the slide that's on the screen, you'll see that this is obviously for arts, audiovisual technology, and communication for local occupations. So this is um, based out of the Rio Grande Valley. Um, so let's take a look at um, public relations specialists. These individuals, um, have an entry level wage of $11.72 uh, and then an average wage would be $22, um, just over $22. And then if you're an experienced um, public in, in, in that field, it's tw uh, just over $27. Um, every year annu annually, there's an expectance of about 90 positions that will be opened up uh, here in the Rio Grande Valley. And the education you do need is a four year it says four years, what that is, it, it shows you that you do need a bachelor's degree uh, is required for that position. Um, and every every position um, that is in the labor market report, um, opportunities it has on the job trainings, it has one year certificates, two year certificates. Uh, if you need um, three or more years beyond the bachelor's degree, we just talked about veterinary in the last session. So there's there's different things that um, that we provide within this report that will benefit you as um, juniors and seniors as you prepare to enter, you know, think about what career that you want to target. Um, this has, we're showing you the, the information based on the webinar you are a part of. However, there's so many other opportunities uh, within the labor market report to take a look at. You can find that on our website, rgvlead.org, and then look under publications and you'll see the 2019 RGV Lead Labor Market Report. It's a PDF file, a lot of great information. Uh, you can also see on the left side, um, you know, another programs, digital and multimedia arts along with digital communication. So we wanna make sure that we provide as much information as we can. And this process, the Labor Market Report, takes about a year to complete. Uh, so we do go very in-depth to make sure that we provide you the best information possible so you can make the best decision. So <clears throat> our first speaker, uh, our first uh, employer that we have today is um, Bobby Verial. He is the co-founder of Triggers Media here in the Rio Grande Valley. We're going to go ahead and play his video. Hey students in the Rio Grande Valley, my name is Bobby Villarreal, I'm the co-founder of Triggers Media. I'm originally from Alamo, Texas, and today I'm going to share with you what it is to do at Triggers Media. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any you want to do. Dream ultimate reality. At Triggers, our mission is to help build better brands for businesses so they can generate more business. We 
do that by offering advertising and marketing services for them. Uh, these services can range from website development, video production, graphic design, social media marketing. At the end of the day, is we're really trying to think a strategy and implement that strategy so they can be successful for their business. So my role at Triggers Media is basically the bridge of communication from our clients to our team. And at the end of the day, what we're really trying to focus on is delivering a high quality product, but most importantly, achieving the results that they want. So I'm pretty sure you can get a lot of great advice from a lot of other people who are in this industry. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna give you the best advice based on my experiences. Student organizations, uh, some elective courses that are available to you at your school, uh, whether that be Photoshop, uh, computer graphics, photojournalism, all of those are a great solid foundation for you coming into this type of industry. Harness the power of the internet. There's tons of information out there. There's definitely online communities. Uh, there's tools and resources such as YouTube. Uh, you can search anything on YouTube and you pretty much learn it from you. Uh, so my best bet is take advantage of that. In any industry that you decide to pursue, networking is going to be very huge. Uh, you need to take advantage of that. Uh, my best advice is picture yourself in 10 years doing what you want to do. If you can find someone who's already doing that, find a way to meet them and ask them how they got started. That's going to be the best thing to do. Practicing your skills is going to be the next most important thing you want to do. If there's a photography project you want to tackle, go and do it. You're going to learn a lot from that experience. Whether it's good or bad, it's all about the experience. That's the best advice I can tell you. At Triggers Media, we aspire to become masters of the craft. Regardless of whatever industry you decide to pursue, make sure you fail fast and bounce right back up. At the end of the day, as long as you put in the hard work and effort, you will succeed. We would like to thank Mr. Vidyal for taking the time to um, create a video for us. Uh, trying to see, I don't know. He is actually on the call. Thank you, Mr. Vidyal, for being on with us. I'm going to run a poll. Um, while if you want to share any other advice while you're here, it's in about 45 seconds. Like I said, we definitely appreciate you. Um, so for all everybody that's in attendance, you will see a poll that comes on your screen. Please help us make this um, better for the years to come. And, and answer the, the questions on one to five, how would you rate the presentation? Five being the highest. Thank you so much, Mr. Vial, it's all yours. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for having me and giving us the opportunity you know, to share what we're doing here in the, in the Valley. Um, so, yeah, uh, I mean, if, if there's anything else, I, I don't know if we're taking questions right now or is it towards the end of the presentation? Uh, but, you know, basically in a nutshell, uh, our industry, I mean, it's growing uh, in the sense of, you know, social media is a big thing. Uh, and you know, there, there's very, especially now with the pandemic, um, there's been a lot of growth from stores who are brick and mortar and never had a website before, and, you know, reaching out to businesses like ours, asking for our help and guidance. Um, so uh, that, that's kind of like the insight I can give you currently right now, because what, what we're facing in our industry right now. Appreciate that. Um, I definitely appreciate. It. Did you stay local for your education? Did you? Yeah. Out? So yeah. So that's a great question. So so I, I graduated from PSU Memorial in 2002, uh, and I left to San Antonio uh, at the University of the Incarnate Word. Uh, I initially pursued a degree for graphic design arts uh, and website development. And uh, long story short, I ended up graduating with a business administration degree. Uh, with a fo with a minor and all that stuff, but also with a focus in marketing. So basically, all the experience I had through my college education got me to where I'm at today. Um, learning the different aspects of the industry, um, and, and there's a lot. And the the best advice I can give to everyone is uh, try not to just stick to to one thing. Uh, tr try to learn as much as you can uh, in this industry. 
Um, uh, one that's very undervalued is writing skills. Uh, a lot of copywriters uh, actually, you know, it, it's a lot in demand. I mean, they can write anything from scripts uh, to social media management. Um, so that that's one piece of advice I can, you know, give to everyone that's here joining us today. Uh, writing creative writing is one that's very undermined uh, in this field. Uh, and then, of course, you know, having a solid foundation of some type of art skills, uh, you know, your drawing, your photography, uh, that, that's going to be helpful as well. Definitely appreciate you being on the call, Mr. Vial, taking some time to be with here and, and providing some information additional from the video. So we definitely appreciate you. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. I don't see any questions. However, if there's any questions that come up after, um, you know, the session or anything, you know, we'll definitely reach out to you to to get that answered, to be able to get an answer for, for the students. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. All right. Next we have... Um, hey, student. Uh, presentation, a uh, live presentation by Mr. J.J. Bavra from Dig uh, Digital Media Design from Texas State Technical College. Give me just a moment. I'm going to make him a presenter. Um, it should be yours, um, J.J. There we go. All right. Y'all can see my stuff, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, hello and welcome. Um, and thanks, Bobby. That was really cool. I love seeing the work coming out of the triggers. Uh, and so what I want to talk about is our graphic design programs that we have here in the entire state of Texas. Uh, and again, my name is JJ Vavra. I'm the statewide department chair over the digital media division. Uh, currently we have two programs that, that are in related fields with this. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. But one big question is, how many ads will you see today? Um, and just some statistics that I've been finding is, uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna be a verbatim reader, but on this one I am. So one study shows that you'll see more than 300 ads. Of those, you'll only remember half and even fewer will make an impression on you. Of those few, you'll probably remember them because they had great design behind them. Um, what we do in our programs, again, is help create graphic designers with going into different specialties of media. And so, oh, by the way, just to let you know, these designs you're seeing on all these ads are from the students in both of the programs that I'm over, the digital media design and visual communication technology programs. I'll get into what both those programs do specifically here in a bit. Um, and so our biggest challenge is, again, is to make those images and and brands that are very impactful that that help uh, businesses attract certain clientele. And so just to give you an example, just because I know some of you are, are very aware of, of design and, and advertisements because you see them every day, uh, I do want to talk about what it takes to become a graphic designer. Uh, and so what you see here on the right uh, is just kind of one of those examples. And so our students will create designs for a client. and they go through the entire, what we call the creative process. And so everything kind of starts with what's called a creative brief. And in that brief, we learn about uh, information about the company. So in this ex example from a student, this Bodhi Fruit, uh, they were given a creative brief, which talks about, you know, the company's mission statement, uh, what, type of, uh, what type of people that they're wanting to attract to their business, their target market, as you will. Uh, they're trying to bring an awareness to their products, so that way they can sell more of those products. Um, and you can see in this example, they went through a branding exercise where they actually came up with five different logos to showcase to the client. And so that way they can, you know, have some options to see which direction would be the best direction for them. And everything ties back to that creative brief. You can even see that the students even created some example, uh, kind of one page uh, website kind of headers that they have at the top. Uh, think of like social media kind of headers. Uh, and you can see, look at the differences between these, but they all kind of, they have that feeling of going back to that certain target market that they were shooting for. Um, and one thing that is listed here, listed here is, man, our, our programs are perfect if you have a passion for art, media, and technology. Not, not that you like using your phone, but more of a passion for having that, un, that back understanding. If you like puzzles, you like figuring things out, 
uh, and you have a good understanding uh, of the way people kind of think, or specifically empathy, having empathy of how people think and feel, uh, then man, we're a great program for you. It is a lot of work, just like any program that you're gonna hear today or any job field, everything is work. Uh, but it, it takes a good student to really kind of put those passions to use. Uh, here's another example, you, just to give you a little less free lesson of the day. Uh, this is some student work that they have in their portfolio where they were trying to create a branding for this one uh, Southern tradition collection for pecan oil. Um, and take notice, you know, they, they made their kind of one page website. Uh, there's that front header page. And of course, they also did a mobile version of this. Now, this is the design portion of it. And they kind of do mock-ups using what's called Adobe XD. And we'll, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but I just want to make sure you all are saying that we're, we're creating the design aspect now of these, not necessarily the development side. And, and here's that lesson. Notice some of the colors that they're using. Lots of blacks. Uh, we have browns and greens. And so uh, here's that free lesson. So when you see these greens, that, that's, that's kind of meaning from the earth. And then, of course, a lot of the browns that they're using on the recipes as well. Look at, notice the green on the lime. They didn't have to use limes, but they use it for a specific reason, or the mint, uh, or whatever that spice is, right, or herb that is. Y'all can maybe notice, I won't. But those are those similar colors. Look, even the buttons at the very bottom, uh, you see, are green as well. So they kept with that color scheme because it makes you feel it's from the earth. The browns are kind of representative of the pecan, uh, but all gets thrown together. And because they're using black, uh, that makes you feel like it's a very expensive brand. So before you even purchase this, you're looking at packaging and that gives you an idea of how much it costs. Uh, so case in point, think of Apple. Whenever you buy an iPhone or something, a lot of money and thought gets put into the packaging of those products as well. Um, and so normally if you're in a store, sometimes people, well, a lot of times people buy off of impulse. Um, and some to that packaging is what's attracts you to it. And sometimes you may be straight away from certain packaging because you may be on a budget. <laughs> so you haven't even looked at the product. You're just looking at the packaging and you're already being, you're already being told by a feeling of how expensive that product is. Uh, now, I keep talking about graphic design and branding and marketing, uh, but there are some specialties. Uh, just like you heard uh, Mr. Virial say a minute ago, I mean, there, there's videography, photography, there's multimedia, sort of like in, in web page design. Uh, or, or app develop or design. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, I'm talking about the print industry as well. Uh, there's many different way, uh, places that you can go into. Uh, some companies offer all of that. Some companies hire you for a specialty. Uh, if you take a look at this, here's another free lesson of the day. This is a poster advertisement a student did for Pizza Hut. Um, you know, why do you think Pizza Hut uses the color red in their designs? I mean, our students didn't redesign their logo. They just, they used it, but they created an advertisement to make you uh, obviously want to buy pizza, right? And so they use typography in order to be in the shape of a slice of pizza to make you read it and it all kind of tied together. But as far as that color red goes, uh, red has an emotional uh, subconscious feeling. So red actually makes you hungry. And so when you're looking at a lot of the uh, ad, or a lot of the branding for food companies, you, you think of McDonald's, red and yellow. Yellow makes you feel happy or joyful. And then you see red, which makes you hungry. So imagine putting happy and joyful and hungry together, you get multi-billion dollar business when you're helping with that branding. Uh, it's, it's very cool. So once you understand those fundamentals of color, typography, uh, shapes, I know that seems kind of rudimentary and fundamental, but man, that, they're so important to our designs. Um, just some examples, you know, uh, based off US Bureau of Statistics, Labor Statistics, Texas employs the second most multimedia arts, artists in the nation. Uh, so that's, it's a good field to get into and it's just going to keep growing, especially in, in where we're at right now, even with COVID, uh, it was mentioned before about social media being huge. Yeah, it, it's just getting even bigger. And so as graphic designers, we find out where the marketing goes and we follow that. The design stays the same, but it just goes to different mediums. Uh, so take a look at this. This is an example of one of our, uh, second semester projects, uh, where a student go, uses the creative process all full circle. So example, uh, this student was given a creative brief about a uh, a wine called Onyx Castle. We gave them the name. They did not. Uh, they had to. They have just works like just like a real world project. So with that creative brief, uh, our students will read that and study it. Then they'll go research, uh, and they'll start doing mind mapping or brainstorming. So a lot of our students didn't know what Onyx was, so they had to go and research that. So they took a day to research all of this information and come back with a bunch of information and imagery uh, and text. 
And then they finally start drawing out thumbnails just to get those ideas out there based off of the research. Because you, when you're working on a project, your mind has to be totally involved with that product. Uh, and so you see of all these thumbnails, you know, this one was kind of circled. Uh, over here is a comprehensive slit. So they drew it a little bit larger just to come out with some extra details possibly. Notice the difference between this thumbnail and this comprehensive, which is a little bit bigger. And they drew the, the wine bottle as where the drawbridge was. Uh, and then of course we look down here at the bottom, we see that this is the official logo that was chosen. And then to help clients, a lot of times we have to put things on mock-ups. So the students will either take pictures of products and then put their logo on it, or they'll find some existing mock-ups of, of products and place the logo on there. Now notice on this product right here, they, they chose the bottle. And again, they're helping tell the client this of how to brand them as they chose Onyx because it's a black color. Notice they have a black label or, or a covering right here on a black bottle. And they chose to not go with the, the label around the bottle because they wanted this white kind of silvery material to pop out. And so they're telling the client, look, you need to have a surface that reacts to light. You notice how it's brighter right here than it is in the middle. And so that also, that plays a big factor in everything. So once you've gotten the agreement from the client, you've gone over and you've talked about costs of all of this, then it can finally be sent to production. Uh, so there's a lot involved. It's not just making logos, it's seeing everything full circle and then coming up with a plan of how to get that message out there for the company. So that way they can sell their product. Uh, so again, all this is just student work that you're seeing here. Now I wanna talk about the differences between the programs. Uh, again, some photography work that our students are doing as well in between. Uh, They're doing architecture, which is really cool. Um, and so, sorry, I went back and forth real quick. So I put on here affordability plus options equals your success, uh, which is true because the TSC program is not a very expensive program. It's a two-year program. Uh, and you'll see some prices of that here in a second. But I do want to talk about this. One of my most favorite things, and I know the students love it too, is now once you come up with an idea of how to sell your idea to a client, I love creating merch. <laughs> that, that's just other ways for clients to, uh, uh, you know, depending if it's on a creative brief. A lot of times we put we put logos and ideas on merch anyway because that's something the companies can sell as extra income. Uh, and that's ultimately what it is. We're trying to help the business make money. And this is another way of doing it. Uh, man, look at this. I love the, you know, they create these headers for whether it's for, for websites or social media. You can see that they're creating ticket designs. Um, just showing you here, multi multimedia artist jobs project an increase of 17%. That's a huge increase, uh, especially about where we're at today by 2024. Uh, and here are those costs. So currently right now, uh, our programs are $2,220 per semester. Uh, that's not a huge amount um, for what you're getting. Uh, so something to kind of think about. Um, and one thing that I do want to point out is both programs, the, the visual communication technology and the digital media design program are both offered 100% online only. Uh, right now we have about 270 students in the program. Uh, they're, they're all going online. Our programs have been online for uh, about two, three years now. Uh, and they, you know, due to COVID, we chose to just make it fully online until you know, something else happens. Uh, but so far students have been doing very well with that. Um, you know, going back to this, we start with fundamentals. We talk about colors, shapes, type, or typography. Uh, I notice this, this is, again, is another second semester project uh, where the student sees the uh, design full circle based off creative brief, and we're really trying to help with branding the client. And notice the difference here. Uh, we talk about visual hierarchy and marketing, but notice the difference between that pineapple pink. Two completely different styles. Uh, this is two different students in the class, and uh, I love it when, when students come up with completely different ideas because it really matches the industry. As if you have multiple graphic designers trying to come up with ideas to help brand a company, they should be different. Uh, but notice just, again, it's not just creating a logo. Notice everywhere you're looking, they're trying to figure out ways of help uh, brand all their products. So the specialties now, the differences between the two programs. So the digital media design program special, specializes in video, multimedia, and web. Uh, the, the, the big three right there. And it's kind of spread throughout the program. The visual communications technology program primarily focuses 100% on, again, they both have fundamentals, but the VCT program uh, focuses on the print and dealing with, you know, those types of printer issues. You know, right now, yes, COVID is going on, but, but printing isn't stopping. I, I see a lot more signage today than I've seen in the past. Um, I mean, you can look outside, there, there's signs everywhere. Um, 
And I heard one time that somebody told me, isn't print dying? And then I said, you know, haven't you walked into HEB recently? <laughs> uh, everybody has a, has a package uh, design. I mean, when you go to HEB or Target or Walmart, somebody has to design those packagings. And, and not only has Sunshine have to design them, but going full, going throughout the full process of the print process, you know, what type of printers, what types of inks, how is it going to work on your product or, you know, what materials are going to be made out of? There's a lot to think about when just, when you're dealing with print. So that's why we have them in different specialties. Um, this, okay. So here, it, here's the digital media design program laid out with our five semesters. And the, the specific digital media courses are outlined here on the left-hand side. The five academic courses are here on the right-hand side. So if you're coming in already having some of your college uh, credits, that will make this a lot easier as well. So when you look at these, uh, notice these first two semesters really revolve around those fundamentals that I was talking about before. As we continue on down here on the bottom, you notice now we're getting into the specialties. You know, we have our print class, uh, our, our digital video class. We have two of those. We have an interface design class, a advertising and sales promotion class. So we can understand what it looks like to go for full circle with our products. Um, web design, interactive digital media. Uh, in, these, in these beginning classes, these are the fun classes, right? But you got to work your way up there. So in these beginning classes, we had the design communication classes. Uh, that pineapple pink and was, was part of this design communications two class. Uh, we have our fundamentals of photography up here. Really fun class, teaches you everything about your, uh, you know, an SLR and lenses and uh, how to take those right pictures. So that way, by the time you get to your video class, uh, you have a great knowledge of those cameras uh, and lenses. Your digital engine one and two class, we deal a lot with the Adobe Creative Suite. Some of you may have played with that before. Uh, that's pretty much industry standard right now. And, and some companies may go a slightly different route with some video software. Uh, most, I, I can't say most of your companies will work with Adobe, uh, but I do want to make the point is just because you know a software doesn't mean you can land the job. You have to understand the why you're using it. So anybody can pick up a pen and brush, but that doesn't make you an artist. So this is just a tool to get you to that final uh, result. That's what it is. So I've seen some people use some out amazing programs uh, that are outside of Adobe and they still get a great job done. So I just want to make that point out there. Uh, Again, more design, there's menu design work. Uh, and now on to the visual communications class or, or program where I said that they primarily dealt with the print media. And so again, these first two semesters really, really uh, getting involved with that, the, the fundamentals, you know, typography, your digital imaging classes, which those are your Photoshop classes. Uh, and now we see we have a digital publishing one, digital publishing two, digital publishing three, and publication design, lots and lots of amazing print classes in here. Uh, and it still continues on with the, they have a, uh, their, their program has an internship class. And so with this internship class, uh, they have an entire semester where they're working for a company. Uh, that's one of the best ways to get a job out there is getting some actual experience in with a company. Uh, during COVID, we've been trying to find more companies that will work with our students online. Uh, and it's getting better and better. And so this internship class, even though it show, shows the fourth semester, some of our, our students are allowed to take it in a third semester and they can repeat it again and again. So our hope is, is that, that it would, they would have an internship for an entire year, which gives them a year's worth of experience before even graduating. Uh, the final class, which both programs have, I'll go back a couple, you'll see that we in digital media, there's a portfolio class and there's one here. This is how we get jobs in the industry. Uh, our portfolio is... Uh, we want to usually cater our portfolio to the job that we're applying to. So if I were, uh, and, and I'm answering, I'm using Bobby Virial again. Sorry, Bobby. <laughs> so if I, if I wanted to get a job at his place, um, I'd probably research his website and look at the type of work that they do. And then I would, I would take all the work that I've done, maybe even make a few more new pieces that matches what they do for a living to, to let them know that, Hey, I, I could be a viable candidate at your job and I could do this. Um, and that's something that we that we teach our students. And so by the time they get to this develop portfolio class, they, they've had all these semesters to create some work. And then now when we get to here, we do exactly what I just said. We curate the existing work that you have to make sure it lines up with the job that you're trying to go for and maybe even create a, a couple new pieces during that class. And so that that's the idea behind that. And this is such this is our capstone. This is one of our most important classes of both programs. Uh, and that's a really fun class to go through because 
that's when you start going, okay, we need this. This is the time to really cater all of your work towards the job. And that's what we do at TSTC. And you'll hear all of us uh, say, you know, we're here to help you find a job because that's our funding formula at TSTC. Uh, TSTC gets paid when you get paid as, as a, when you get your job. Uh, and so we're really big on trying to help you get there. And so for an example, both programs have a, have a job board. So right now it has about 150 jobs and they're all over the state of Texas. And so students are, have access to this all the time that they're with us and, and afterwards. So that way they can see the jobs around Texas and hopefully cater their portfolios around those jobs. Uh, when they're in their first semester, they can see this job that they really want to get to. And so they can say, you know, I want to go work for that company because I love it. So I'm going to keep building that portfolio to get to that place because that's their dream. So both programs, very, very good at creating graphic designers, understanding marketing and branding, but they have that two different specialties, which is either multimedia video uh, or it's going to be in the print field. Uh, some students have taken both and just it makes them a, a more viable candidate for jobs all around Texas. So some more, this is the first semester where, oh, look at all these amazing logos and identities. Isn't that awesome? Um, now we just have some really talented students uh, trying to make names for themselves and really trying to get those jobs out there. All right. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. There's my email address at jvavra at tstc.edu. Uh, and I will get you to the right person or I will answer the questions myself. So if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Oh, Luis, I can't hear you. I'm muted. There you go. Uh, definitely appreciate your time uh, and, and the presentation that you gave. I, I have, I guess, a couple of questions. Just um, could you provide us with a pay range for um, someone interested in pursuing your degree and what you're doing? Sure. I mean, I know I talked about the Rio Grande Valley, but I know you, you're statewide. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're statewide. So uh, pay pay is different. It's all based off of the area that you live in. And so when you're mentioning, you know, the, the 17 or $20 per hour here in the Valley, you know, based off of your time and skill level, I mean, really in our industry, usually the more, more, more mileage or the more experience you have, the higher your paycheck can be. Um, but it really depends on the area. Houston, Houston, Austin, Dallas, you know, the Waco, those types of larger cities are going to pay you a, definitely a, button, a bunch more. Uh, if when most of our uh, students that are getting jobs in the cities, they more have more or less have salaries. And so it's not really an hourly wage. It's it's you know, you're getting paid your uh, your 30 or your 32 a year plus benefits uh, in your in your smaller from what I've noticed in your smaller cities. Uh, it's more of an hourly wage, uh, kind of mimicking what you were showing in before, like you're you know, maybe they may be starting at 15 and working their way up, uh, but they work up pretty quickly. Uh, you know, I'm from the Valley myself, and from what I've noticed with a lot of the companies down here um, is you, you, you get started small because the Valley is all about trust. We're, the Valley is very family oriented. And so once you've built that trust, uh, then then the the hourly wage starts going up. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I've lived in the Valley and I've worked those jobs and they're amazing. And it's kind of one of those that once you're in the family, you're in the family. <laughs> so I love that about the Valley. Um, very cool. Very cool. We definitely appreciate that. I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to um, put up the next poll for your presentation. So if uh, the students and, and uh, attendees can please answer the question. Appreciate it. Um, JJ is still with us. So if you have any questions, put it in the chat in the question box so he can answer any questions. I think um, Mr. Riddell Bobby is still with us. Um, so if you have any questions that are, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're burning to ask them. Go ahead and ask. We, we have the, the professionals here to answer those questions. So I'm going to launch the poll, though. So if you can help us, we definitely appreciate it. Yes, and thanks for letting me uh, present. So I appreciate that. No, it's always great to have um, professionals in the field. Obviously, I can't do that presentation and talk to you about that. Um, but I can help organize what we're doing today, correct? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm going to give it about another 10 seconds, and then we have our next um, presenter.
All right. Thank you all so much for helping us with the poll. We definitely appreciate it. And close it. Um, next, we'll bring on. Oh, I see a question pop up. Let's see. I see this open uh, an opportunity for independent contract work. Do you do you agree? Um, JJ or Bobby, is this? You, you see, it's for independent contract. Oh, definitely. I do that too. I mean, I, I have my own business uh, outside of TSCC where I do contract work. Uh, some of our students, I'm sorry, I jumped in, Bobby. I, I apologize. No, no, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> add on whatever you leave out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I met when I was a student in college, and some of our students, uh, they get those side jobs while they're going through college which is kind of cool the hard part is is we try to tell students right away it's like don't say yes to those jobs so quickly let us let us walk you through that process and help you understand what a contract is <laughs> uh because we're not a business program uh we're creating graphic designers and so we, there is a business management technology program at tscc where they have three really good classes about you know what's a w2 <laughs> like what are taxes how to register your business like those types of things um, and so we try to walk students through that, but we, we're trying to help them take those classes because they're more in depth. But yes, definitely contract work. Our students have made money with, with you know, going through the program. And that definitely builds your portfolio and gives you that that confidence when you're talking, when you're going to interviews and talking with jobs. Because that's that's one of the hardest things is graphic designers today compared to maybe graphic designers 20 years ago um, is a lot of graphic designers 20 years ago were kind of quiet and they didn't really do the selling process of this a lot of times they were the ones that were creating it and then the marketing people were they were the ones selling it coming up with these great ideas we're starting to see that happening like this uh, and this is just my opinion in, in some places especially the smile places but if you could do contract you have to do you're the janitor you're <laughs> you're the marketer you're everything you're the business person and so you have to be very outgoing and understand multiple facets if you are going to do contract work. And so that's why in the beginning of the course, we're just or program, we're, we're trying to discourage that a little bit until we see something in them. And once we see that, we help them out and mentor them. And that's that's what our program is about. Is we have this mentor mentee relationship. It's not just come take our class and you're done. Uh, and that was one thing I forgot to mention. I'm sorry I'm taking up too much time. Is <laughs> uh, digital media design actually fall of 21 is actually going to go what's called PBE. And so this is a different way of teaching. And so for those of y'all that are juniors and seniors, you'll have access to this. And what it is, it's not your traditional college where you come in, you take the class or you do an assignment and then you move on to the next subject matter. This is based off of what are called competencies. And so if companies uh, like Triggers uh, Media, let's say they, they need somebody that knows X, Y, and Z. Well, what if you failed an assignment and you're doing this right now in high school, right? Like, let's say you failed an assignment. So what happens there is you just move on to the next unit because you don't have time. And so the way PBE works is you get an A, B, or an F. So did you master the competency, which is can you take a in-focus picture with correct exposure? You know, so if you can't do that, why would you move on to the next assignment? Does that make sense? And so mm -hmm. that that's where, so it's going to be very mentor-mentee relationship where we're going to guide, we have all the instructions for the students, they do it. We say, no, you did it wrong. Go back and fix it. And then once they fix it, then they can move on to the next one. That, that sounds a lot like industry, doesn't it? Yeah, that, uh, that definitely does. Um, Bobby, Bobby, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, no. Uh, JJ hit some good points, you know, on, on everything he said. I mean, it definitely, I mean, I, I think in my opinion, you know, uh, in our industry, the, the work environment is changing. Um, as right now, I mean, I'll be honest, our team's working from home. I mean, we're all ro working remotely now. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing is, I mean, it gives us the freedom to kind of work on our own pace, you know, but, you know, meet the deadlines that we need to meet with our clients. Um, so, so the way our business is structured is, you know, we have retainer clients. But we also have project based clients, which is, you know, we bring in a team specifically for this project. Um, and if someone, um, and it just depends, you know, what capacity we have at the moment. Um, if we're just too caught up with retainer clients, we're, we have to outsource independent contractors to come in and help, you know, execute uh, what the client needs. And, and at the end of the day, you, you know, our focus is just making sure that we execute on delivering what the client wants and making sure we get those results uh, at no matter what costs, you know, for us is going above and beyond uh, to make the client happy and satisfied with what we're providing them. 
Well, I definitely, um, I definitely appreciate both of y'all um, and the insight. Hopefully that answered the question for you um, that posed it. Um, so hopefully that, that did help and, and answer. So we're going to jump to our last presenter for this session. Um, we have uh, author Todd Ayton. Uh, let me make sure. All right, I'm gonna turn off my camera so you can see. All right, and we should be sharing. Hi, my name is Todd Hayden. I am the manager at Krispy Kreme Donuts, and I'm also uh, an author who wrote a book on how to get a job. It's specifically geared uh, for the teenagers and the young adults that are looking for that first or second job. So I want to welcome you guys, and thank you for taking part in this video. I hope the things that I present to you today are going to be helpful to you uh, as you get yourself into the workforce. You're looking for that first or second job, maybe full-time, maybe part-time. You're just working to get through school. So as a manager at Krispy Kreme, we do more than just sell donuts and coffee. When I hire people, I'm looking for somebody that's going to give my customers an experience that's so good that they're going to want to come back again and again. And they're going to want to bring their friends. So more than just doing the work, I need somebody to do the put those donuts in a box, right? But I also need people that can connect with my customers and that they can share that joy that is Krispy Kreme. I want my customers to walk out of here with a wow experience. So when they come back, they know they've been treated well, they had great product, they had great service from great employees. I'm looking for energy. I'm looking for people that have that personality, that have that shine. I've been a hiring manager for over 35 years. I have seen literally tens of thousands of applicants come through my door. And the reality is most of those people could probably do that job, but they disqualified themselves in one way or another because of something they did or did not do, something they said or did not say. And it's not always their fault. They just simply don't know. So I've written this book specifically to address those things. And it's really grandma's book. There's nothing new in here, but there are principles and, and tips and advice that will just serve you well. And it will take you from being on the bottom or in the middle of that applicant file, and it will put you at the very top. If you'll just read through this, you'll, you'll see it's a thin book. You know, it's a, you can probably get through this in about an hour. Um, it's designed to ask you some questions and challenge your thinking. But I believe that if you get through some of these lessons, it would give you such an advantage in the workplace over all the other applicants. When I was 15 years old, I used to get on my bike on Saturdays, and I would ride all around Brownsville. And I would apply at every store that I could find. Mostly fast food restaurants, McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Burger King. And I would just ride to every shop and I would fill out applications. And my persistence eventually would get me a job. But I sure wish I had known more about it at the time. I wish somebody had taught me some of the, the principles of what to do and what not to do. I would have asked to speak to the manager. I would have dressed a little bit better. You know, I walk in there, I was all hot and sweaty because I was, I was riding my bike. If I had to give you my best advice, I would say, do everything you can to be prepared. The person that is most prepared is most likely to get the job. The other thing I would say to you is that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So be aware of that and be careful about what your first impression is. And make sure that when you make that first impression, that it's a great one. Because of the nature of this job fair, I don't have a table to give these away, but I have provided some door prizes, and maybe you'll win one of these. But if not, you can search for this on Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com, and the easiest way is to put my name in there. Just Todd Hayden in the search bar, and it'll bring you right to this book. You'll be able to look over a little bit of a preview. You can scan through it. You can read a little bit about me on the back. And if you decide to buy it, you buy it. But it's here to help you. And if you're here in the valley and you swing by 
my uh, Krispy Kreme, I'll even sign your coffee for you. So I just want to encourage you guys to, to go out there. And I wish you the best of luck in your job search ideas. And, and again, if you ever get a chance to clean my Krispy Kreme, come by. You know, I'd, I'd love to shake your hand and talk to you for a bit. Thanks, guys. We definitely appreciate uh, Mr. Ayton and um, <clears throat> that opportunity. He did give us a couple of books um, to share um, with um, with the registrants and the attendees and part of the raffle. Um, I did get some comments and questions that you can't see the video. Um, I, I'm seeing it on my end as far as what the audience views. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. Um, uh, and, and see you know, what went on there. We are gonna publish these um, webinars um, starting next week, in case you missed it and you wanna go back and view that video, but uh, I had it viewed uh, on my laptop and as well as what the audience was viewing. So sorry for any technology difficulties right there. Um, I'm gonna put the poll up for this. Hopefully you were able to, at least able to hear them and give you a good insight in regards to um, you know, what to do and moving forward to get that job. So I'm opening the poll. You should be seeing the poll question. I'll give you about 30 seconds and then we'll go over to the last slide. All right, thank you for those that uh, took the time to put in some polls. <clears throat> Next, we have a video from South Texas College about American Sign Language and Interpreter Studies. Click the link and make sure it goes that way. Make sure I'm sharing the right screen. I just started looking up ASL programs. It's something that I have always been interested in. I found STC's program and right away we were so welcoming with the ASL program. They're always learning something new. It is a language that's always advancing, so you're always learning new words. Not only do you have to listen, you have to watch. You have to pay attention. It really keeps your mind processing. It's a lot of work, but it's extremely rewarding. Sign language is more than just the language of itself. The language came from a community. There is no American Sign Language without the deaf community. The demand for interpreters is here. It's actually a need. I've learned so much. I've done so much. You're never going to be bored. That's what makes this program so exceptional, is the one-on-one -on -one hands-on work that you're getting with your professors and fellow students. I think it's helped me as a person a lot. I love this. I want to keep doing this. We'd like to thank uh, South Texas College for providing that video um, to us. That is another avenue and opportunity. It's inside go to meeting where you indicate. Uh, I still see that there's some technology difficulties. I'm sorry. Like I said, everything that I see on my end in regards to the uh, what the audience is viewing shows, I don't know why it says it's showing JJ's screen, still waiting to view JJ's screen. Um, definitely sorry for that. We'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Um, and then last but not least, I guess you may not see the last slide. Um, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, our partner, Workforce Solutions Cameron, along with Texas Gas Services, who's a gold sponsor, and the Harlingen Manufacturer Association, who's a bronze sponsor. Uh, along with all our expo committee, um, we, we thank you know, the institutions of higher education, along with the school districts, uh, along with the employers that are listed below. So thank you all so much for uh, those individuals. Refresh your app. And then last but not least, let me just stop sharing. Um, you should go to a white screen. Let me 
rebring it back. Hopefully you're able to see that. Um, this is the QR code. Um, if you don't see the screen, um, once again, I apologize. Um, technical difficulties on my end, it shows that uh, the audience is viewing the, the survey um, that we've put together for the giveaways that we're giving, the Chromebooks, the wireless earbuds, the portable phone chargers, along with the wireless printer, uh, and last but not least, the uh, How to Get the Job Book um, by Todd Ayton. We have two of those. You're able to open your camera, um, point it at the QR code, and then uh, take a look um, at that. So we definitely appreciate you sitting in this session. Uh, session number six, Arts, Audio Technology, and Communications. And then um, our next session is Education and Training at 11 o'clock. And we definitely appreciate uh, each and every one of you. We the link for the uh, QR code and for the survey so you, for, you, for you to complete, excuse me, uh, in case you're not seeing it. Once again, I definitely pro uh, apologize for the technology difficulties. Um, we, we appreciate you joining us today for this, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.